Don't leave me hanging. It's go time. Hello everyone, this is Josh and I'm bringing you the group stages from the Intel Extreme Masters live tournament being played in Cologne, Germany as part of Gamescom 2010. Uh, it is the largest gaming show and convention in Europe. So this is a live StarCraft II event, like I just said, they invited lots of really top players from around the world. Uh, Huck is actually the only North American representative, but Artosis and Idra both sort of count, although they both live in South Korea currently. And uh, these games are being commentated by Day9 and DiPaolo, D Apollo, Dignitas Apollo, but uh, they can't cast every game, so I'm trying to get as many games uploaded here on YouTube as I can so that you guys can catch the ones that you may have missed earlier in the day. And Madfrog is the Swedish Zerg player playing as the Red Zerg over on the right side of Metalopolis for Game 2. TLO, Liquid TLO, better known as the Little One, is the German Terran player. He used to play random in the beta and got a lot of fans with his Terran and Zerg play. Uh, he did not really enjoy his Protoss play very much though, so he has switched to Terran pretty much full time and is playing as Terran throughout this tournament. So. TLO actually did take the first game with some really nice Reapers into Hellions. He's getting a pretty fast Barracks yet again, and a really fast Gas, so Reapers probably to be expected yet again. And Metalopolis, these are actually really, really good positions for Reapers, because they can just hop down this cliff, hop up this cliff, and spend no time at all before they are over in the mineral line of Madfrog, and Madfrog dropping at Spawning Pool um, pretty quickly. Mm, 14 Pool. Uh, 13 pool, 15 pool, something like that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> didn't quite catch it, but uh, he he did get reapered last game and does not want that to happen again, um, at least not quite to the extent that he did. But uh, he held the reapers actually pretty well, considering, and um, just sort of fell apart once the hellions started pouring into his base. So not sure if Madfrog is going to be able to... Oh yeah, it looks like a Reaper is coming again for the little one, and Nitro Pack's already upgrading. It's, he's got a quick scout out with this SEV. Found nothing over here at the close position, and I just hit B instead of V, so I'm very sorry for that. But uh, TLO, like I said, scouted that left position first, did not find anything. This Reaper's still building. It's already queued and rallied to that... Um, far south position, but he does not know that Madfrog is over here. Madfrog actually took a strange scouting pattern with his Overlord. If you take his vision real quick, we'll see that he actually sent his Overlord kind of down first, rather than straight towards the um, command center area, not to give away his position. So the Reaper does now know exactly where he's going, and the SCV is going to show up as well to probably start building a bunker like we saw the first game. But Spinecrawler already coming up. Probably has two queens queued. No, only one still, but the Zerglings are up before the Reaper is able to kill any drones off. However, these Zerglings fall so fast to Reapers, and this SCV actually tanks a couple of shots there. And the Reaper, of course, can just hop down the cliff like we just saw. Gonna get lots of Zergling kills, already has four kills, the SCV actually does some spotting for him. But now the Reaper is all alone, waiting for his Reaper buddy to show up. Madfrog doing a good job deflecting the initial attack there. Does have a spine crawler in a pretty good position here. Queen is gonna be like a mobile spine crawler practically, help take out these Reapers while uh, more Zerglings finish up and the Zergling speed completes. He's actually moving his spine crawler. Actually, don't know about the position too much, but um, probably want to keep him more close to the drones than he actually is, because now the Reapers can loop around to the other side and get some free shots off. Another Reaper does go down, so Madfrog actually not losing too much there. Um, he's probably pretty mad that he can't just keep droning up and be left alone by these Reapers, but uh, he is having to spend a lot of his larva on Zerglings just as fodder for these Reapers until speed finishes. Speed is almost about to finish. These Reapers are probably going to die as they don't really have a good escape route. One queen goes down. Wow, that is actually huge. Madfrog slipping up there and losing that queen. That is going to be pretty bad for him. Basically 150 minerals down the drain. I don't think that queen actually did much, even when it was alive, so Madfrog probably pretty bummed about that. Keeping the Zerglings along the cliff here so that the Reapers can't hop back up, always good to see. And back at TLO's base, he is getting a factory put up. He's got two gas going, he's got his orbital command, very standard stuff um, after transitioning out of Reapers, so don't know if we're going to be seeing three factories like we saw in that last game, but at least one for some Hellions because, again, he knows that his opponent did not have a Roachworn up just yet. And he does actually have a Roachworn building now, which is a difference we're seeing from the last game. All these Speedlings now showing up. TLO actually has four Reapers parked up here, so they're going to get some easy kills here. 
just doing some cliff hopping. It's very simple to kill Zerglings with Reapers, if you didn't already know that. Reapers, I mean, Zerglings are a little bit faster with speed, but um, the cliff hopping mechanic just makes it so easy to micro. So we'll see how many Zerglings uh, Madbrook actually loses here. Probably going to be close to all of them just from these four reap initial Reapers. And Hellions are queued all the way <laughs> to number four out of this factory. This Hellion's going to pop out. Marauder's going to pop out, soak some shots. And um, where'd that Hellion go? There he is. So a couple of Zerglings left do take out one SCV. Mm, don't think he got that second SCV, but... Uh, yeah, Zergling's pretty much handled by now. So we'll pop over to Mad Frog's base and see what he's got going on. Basically, not a whole lot. Getting his lair started, moving his spine crawler up a, a little bit there to help defend that ramp from Hellions. So Mad Frog has seen this before. He knows kind of what to expect. You know, Reapers into Hellions, and then Armory's coming up actually a little bit sooner than we saw last game. So, um, Reapers and Hellions are pretty hard to defend. He's doing a good job by getting Roaches out. Uh, they do pretty well against Hellions, but they're so slow, even on creep, compared to those Hellions and Reapers, that they can still be kited around. And it looks like he's only built one Roach even so far, so not sure what he's spending his money on. He's got a ton of money and lots of Larva. Just being a little bit slow, it looks like he got Supply Blocks, so he's waiting for that Overlord to come out. And now he does spend four Larva there on some Roaches, but um, just being Supply Blocks in this situation is going to be terrible for him. This Reaper can really mess with him. He's going to just park his queen and roach there to block the Hellions from coming up, but uh, they can basically shoot and not be shot back from that position. Reaper doing some spotting for the Hellions. They get some free shots here up the cliff against the roaches and the queen. This is really good for Mad Frog to get these roaches out finally, and um, the Reaper does go down there. The Hellions look like they are just going to head on home for now. Mad Frog basically needs to win this game or he will be um, losing some points from the group stage and TLO will be gaining some so uh, you know never good to lose two games to none in a best of three in group stages because you have very few chances to recoup your losses so Starport with a tech lab actually coming out this is interesting did not see this last game after that armory came out we did see Thor's starting to be produced but instead it looks like TLO just wants to build whatever he wants and is now going for Banshees is he getting cloak no he isn't but um he is going to really mess with uh, Mad Frog's head by building all these Hellions, forcing him to counter with Roaches, and then getting those Banshees in there before he has a Spire up or a Hydralisk Den. He's not even trying to build a Hydralisk Den. So these Hellions, like I said, they're able to kite these Roaches pretty easily just because they have such superior speed. Mad Frog actually taking a chance here, trying to expand. Zerg on one base is inferior to Terran on one base and far as far as um, production capability. So TLO scooting in now with his first couple of Banshees. Will he see this Spire building and will he start to take that out or will he just focus down that Queen as fast as he can? Looks like he is going for that Queen first. Needs to micro this Banshee back. No, actually he doesn't because Banshee's do incredible damage. So he is going to take some free shots at these drones and looks like he does not have these Banshees selected, so he needs to be very careful with what targets he picks right now. Six Mutas are being made for Mad Frog, but these two Banshees are focusing down the Spire, so six Mutas is all he's going to be getting. One Banshee is six on the Spire, the other looks like he got distracted by some drones, but now both of them do finish off the Spire and are going to town on these drones. The Mutas pop out surrounding the Banshees, so they try to get some shots off on some drones. Not successfully, though. Roach is showing up now at TLO's base, but TLO has this Thor. Thors just do crazy, incredible damage to everything on the ground, and uh, if these Roaches can't get in range, this Thor can basically just sit parked back here forever and ever and do tons of damage. Thor actually does splash damage against air, too, so it is the perfect unit to build against this current composition of Mad Frog. He's trying to kill off that tech lab, but actually this Thor that's already building will be able to finish. The tech lab is not necessary to have that Thor finish. It's only necessary to actually start production. So TLO actually doing some pretty good damage. Actually now has Hellions back in here at the main and a Banshee killing off drones. Hellions just going crazy on that mineral line, roasting tons of drones. Three shots from a Hellion will kill a drone incredibly quickly. 
Muta's finally arrived back home to take out these Hellions. Actually, one Hellion is still there shooting drones. Got two kills more than it probably should have. Three kills more. These Roaches just take forever to kill him off. The, the Muta's actually did switch over to that Banshee and kill him off. So if we look at units right now, Madfrog down to only nine drones. He's got as many Overlords as he has drones. So I would say the little one is in a pretty dominant position here with, um, you know, multiple Thors and Banshees against nine drones. But uh, And no Spire, don't forget to mention has not rebuilt that spire anywhere yet cannot afford it does not have the income so the little one basically just biding his time building up that big super army and probably just going to mow down mad frog really i mean at this point in the game it's 79 food against 50 he's got the perfect counters to the units even getting vikings out now to help against those mutalists if thors weren't enough vikings will certainly help but uh, Mad Frog rebuilding that spire now in his mineral line <laughs> and trying to keep it tucked away behind that lair so that um, ground units at least won't be able to easily pick it off. Um, Muta's just trying to stay alive and defend as long as possible, but it looks like TLO is on the move now. Mad Frog probably not going to have much time left to bolster his defenses. It looks like he is just cranking out drones, still trying to catch up. That's really a shame because TLO is going to be winning with one base. He actually built both gas at his natural uh, before floating his command center over there and is already starting to mine out of it. Distance mining gas from his natural, throwing up three more barracks now. Um, really just waiting for this hammer to drop. Um, Mad Frog spreading creep, doing good, building overlords, not getting supply blocked again, but you know, having that tech unavailable for so long is going to be really, really uh, problematic for him. And now these Thors are showing up. He scans up here for some spotting, kills off creep tumors. Now the Roaches and the Thors meet. All these Mutas die incredibly quickly to the Thors. Thors actually just taking all the damage from these Roaches. One Thor does go down, but uh, I have a feeling they're going to be able to mop this up no problem, especially with the help of the Banshee that cannot be hit back. TLO actually has a Banshee with 4 health um, and 5 kills, so he had more kills than he did health there. But uh, 2 Thor is still alive for TLO. He actually he killed the entire army there of Manfrog and a couple of drones, but um, even if he loses this Thor to these Lings, and it looks like he may not even lose the Thor to these Lings, 1 health left, yeah. He does fight it off, but if we look at the unit tabs, he has 22 drones to 41. He's, his tech was just too slow. He doesn't have the income he wants. He's got 1,000 gas piled up and only 100 minerals to spend. He's down to 26 food against TLO's 66. He knows he's not going to be winning this game. So Madfrog does GG. TLO takes this series two games to none. Thanks for watching.